Hi, I'm PJ. Um, I work at Engineard. We're the people behind Deus. That's not really what I'm here to talk about. So what is Mira? Um, you're familiar with JRuby. Mira is kind of along the same vein. Um, when you hear the idea about it, it's kind of a more palatable, less enterprise way of getting involved in Java if you know Ruby. Um, Mira, I've been told, had a goal at one point of replacing Java, but I doubt that's going to happen. There's still a lot of work to be done before it gets to a point where it's even competitive. But um, Java is ubiquitous. It's everywhere. It's in all the code you've seen at some point in time in your life. You've touched Java. You've played with Java. How many people have directly done Java? Not just JRuby, but literally Java. Yeah, so we all know what it is. Um, so in short, Mira is an attempt to create blazingly fast Ruby-like language that can be compiled, compiled to Java bytecode. So what isn't Mira? Mira is not Ruby. Um, you could say Mira is Ruby with static types, but the fact is that Mira is Ruby-like and not actually Ruby. Um, it doesn't share Ruby's type system, doesn't share the core classes, the standard libraries, um, or really any of most of the things that we think makes up Ruby and the Ruby ecosystem. Um, it's more like a Ruby syntax browser. It takes the Ruby syntax, brings it in the JVM tool chain, and compiles it for maximum performance. Um, I know I'm going a little bit fast, but I have 15 minutes, and I had a lot of Club Mata this morning, um, and I'm holding you back from lunch. Um, so Mira and JRuby. The main difference here is kind of the approach. Mira is super lightweight. Um, there's no runtime library. So performance that maximizes performance. Um, when it comes to performance, kind of Mira wins. Um, if you do performance tests on it, it seems like it's really fast, um, but it also has limited capabilities on what it can do thus far. Um, but the idea was it was built for performance. Um, that said, JRuby is so much more mature than Mira. Um, it's widely used, there's a huge community. Um, there's a lot of support for it. Mira is kind of a fledgling language. It's been around for a while, but it's still, you know, just getting off and starting to run with itself. So where did it come from? So there was some dude, I don't know, I guess he's from like Minnesota or something. He was bored, and he made this thing called Doobie, which is a strange name. I'm not sure where that came from. But around 2009, um, Charlie wanted to do a Ruby-like language, subset of Ruby syntax that could compile to solid, fast, idiomatic JVM bytecode. The word Mira, which came along later, is actually a Javanese word, so the people who live in Java, their word for the gemstone Ruby is Mira. And that's how the name switched from Doobie, which is, again, a questionable word. Um, and I think we all see what they did there. Today, it's maintained by Nick Howard, who a lot of people probably know as Baroque Bobcat out on the interwebs. Um, it's still in development. And people are using it to test out ideas to see what, how far they can push it and how far they can go. Like many pro projects, it's looking for people to use it, looking for people to fix issues and contribute. And let me just add like the wondrous feelings you get when you contribute to an open source project like Mira. Like, it's really good to take something that you think, you know, I can maybe use this in a small project and maybe build it into a larger project and modularize some things. And you start to deal with it and you say, okay, well, I see there's a little problem. It doesn't do this. So you take that pain point and you bring it into where you need to fix it, and that makes the language better for everybody. So open source, contribute. I'm going to say that about 80 times. So a few pa facts. This slide got messed up. I've been having a few keynote issues. But um, because Mira is essentially a compiler, it ships with no standard library. I mentioned that earlier. Um, the idea is that users will choose what libraries they want, kind of a la carte. They'll write the plugins they need to support what they need. Um, and the compiler, the compiler will take care of the rest. And that was an explicit design goal. That was the whole idea behind it. You know, why build something? Why build lots of things? Like, think Rails for a second. Why build lots of things that you maybe might need instead of building a few things that will allow you to take just the pieces that you need and build them yourself if you have to? So Mira relies on the back-end target that the developer prioritize and prioritizes and provides. For example, on the JVM type system is mostly Java. Uh, so type declarations refer to the J JVM classes in Tulane. Um, so why Ruby and Java? So as you know, as a Rubyist, Ruby was developed to bring joy to developers, to make developers happy. No one has ever said that about Java. <laughs> ever. 
but it's super powerful, and it allows you to do things that make you feel fulfilled as a developer. Maybe not happy, but fulfilled. You're solving problems. You're getting the jobs done. So if we take the thing that makes coders happy, and we take the things that make them feel fulfilled, we get this hybrid that makes the best of both worlds, and now you're both fulfilled and happy, which is great. So Mira is kind of like the peanut butter cup of the coding world. That's the way I look at it. Um, if you're allergic to peanuts, I'm sorry, but I, I made the reference. And it's out there. I can't take it back. Um, so at this point, it's really important to note where Mira is at. Um, at this point, Mira is on version, when I left home, 0 .0 0.0.14. So it's still in the beginning stages of development. Yes, Charles started in 2009, and yes, it's 2015, but there was kind of a dip because, I don't know, they did some JRuby something something, and, you know, kind of got put by the wayside. Um, but, you know, it's still something that's active. People are getting more involved. Uh, part of the reason why I got into Mira was uh, I work at Engine Yard, and I'm on the community team. And so we look at a lot of open source projects to sponsor and what have you. And one week, we were running a little low on blog posts. So my boss was like, here's what you're going to do, Ruby guy. Go on GitHub and find out what the most contributed to repository is this week. And I went, and it was like, Mira, 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 Mira. And I was like, oh, this is interesting because I've never heard of this thing before. So I dove in, wrote a blog post about it. That generated more interest and then continued to be at the top for the next few weeks. And it was really cool to see something that, that could have easily died out, but is actually a great piece of code, a great way to program that, you know, luckily is starting to see the light of day again. So let's talk about some guiding principles. I'm going really fast, wow. Um, so according to the Mira site, mira.org, the language is based on a few guiding principles. No runtime library. This means no jar files. Uh, dependencies can be decided by the developer, customized to each project. Uh, kind of similar to the way that Bundler helps Ruby projects remain siloed. So if you have several projects, they're not all using the same gems. Bundler helps you handle that. Um, kind of in a way that RVM helps you handle keeping your Ruby version strictly for per project. Um, it has a clean and simple syntax. It's static typing, syntax similar to the JVM type system, but at the same time borrowing heavily, heavily, heavily from Ruby. Um, there's metaprogramming and macros, so built-in tools for macros and metaprogramming, so that at compile time, you get the feel of a dynamic language while you're still in a compiled language. Um, there's no performance penalty, um, and I'm directly quoting this from the site. Because Mira direct, directly targets the JVM's type system and JVM bytecode, it performs exactly as well as Java. Take that for what it's worth. Again, that's quoted from the site. And it's neither a positive or negative attribution to Mira. It's just one of the guiding principles in developing the language. There's also some design principles. Um, so it's platform agnostic, meaning that it roughly, it, roughly similar scripts could conceivably compile any number of type systems and runtimes. And in that sense, Mira is more of a rough coupling of the Ruby-like syntax with a pluggable type interface and compilation pipeline. Um, Mira code has no runtime dependency other than the libraries accessed directly from the Mira code. So it's kind of like your runtime dependencies will depend on exactly what you build into it. Um, it's that a la carte idea. Um, there's no current JVM language addresses the, that towards the aesthetic goals of Mira without also introducing a runtime library, which can also, also be kind of prohibitive based on size. Um, so some general goals. Um, the compiler chain and plugins for it will be written in Ruby. Um, that's kind of moving forward, looking towards the future. Um, though there's no specific reason that they couldn't be written directly in Mira for Mira at a later date once it matures a little bit. Um, the syntax is largely Ruby-inspired, and we'll see that in, in a few minutes when I show some examples. Um, and to that extent, like the current Mirror implementation starts with an AST transformation from JRuby's AST. So there's a lot of borrowing going on. It seems like it's a real hybrid. Um, the type system is purely symbolic, with the compiler you know, reasonably mapping symbolic types to platform-appropriate representations. All right, so primary elements. What goes into Mira? The parser is based on the JRuby parser, and that produces a Ruby abstract syntax, syntax tree, or AST. Then it goes to the transformer, and the transformer's job is to take the Ruby AST and convert it into a Mira-specific AST. Then the type inferrer decorates the Mira AST with appropriate typing information for the, back, the target backend, which you set up. Um, and then the backend code generator 
actually compiles the code. So sounds pretty simple. How do we get started? This is always, by the way, this is something that I notice in a lot of talks people seem to skip. Like everybody's like, great, let's get started and look at code. No, let's get started and actually friggin' install something because you kind of have to get there first. Um, so let's shave yaks. Um, beginning with any language, biggest hurdle is getting started. Um, with Mira, the authors and the maintainers have given us the opportunity to find our own way by offering a few different mef methods, and there's a lot of methods, and that's great. And they are outlined on mira.org and in the GitHub project. Um, regardless of what method you use, you are going to need to have JRuby 1.7 or higher. Um, I think prior to version 0 .0 0.0.12, you could have lesser versions of JRuby, but now you now need 1.7 or higher. It's not going to happen. Um, once you have everything in place, and the instructions are pretty simple, I did it using the, uh, the general method that I use doing every Ruby project. So I use RVM. Um, for those of you who have known me for a while, I was like RVM patient zero. I used to work with Wayne Seguin. He sat in the desk behind me. I went to the bathroom. He installed RVM on my computer and broke fucking everything, um, which was great. So yeah, sorry, I'm having a flashback. Um, so yeah, so you just RVM installed JRuby, and that'll grab the latest version of JRuby. Of course, RVM used JRuby, so that's installed. Um, if you're using, if you're looking for JRuby 9000, it wasn't available when I prepared this talk, um, but it is now. Um, after the JRuby is installed, it takes a few minutes. You use the RVM to JRuby, and then you just simply install Mira as a gem. If you're from, if you're more familiar with Ruby than JRuby or Java, this is the easy way to do it. Like. 10, 15 minutes tops. Like, you can barely get your coffee done and it's already done for you. Um, so then, you're ready to roll. So of course we do what we do with every project and we, see, we say hello world because that's, I don't know. As my daughter says, it's stupid because you're saying hello to yourself and you said world and that's dumb. Um, she's 13, she gets angry about programming things. Um, so it's really easy, you go, you know, you go into your, uh, your terminal and you type mira-e puts hello world. Boom, everything's working, yay. Um, so let's take a look at something a little more complicated. So when I was writing that blog post and kind of getting involved, I noticed that there was this huge file called examples Rosetta code. And what this is, is people who wanted to get into Mira decide that a really good way to do that would be to write some code that did simple things. That other people could look and say, okay, this is simple, like, you know, it's a few lines, 10, 15 lines. And now I understand a little bit better how this works. So I wrote a little thing, and it's, it's very simple. We have a puts line that's going to ask me to enter my name, um, just like we would in Ruby. Following that, we have a read line to bring in whatever input comes from that. And then for verification, we spit the name that was entered back out with a little sentence so people know. We count the characters, including blank spaces, and tell the user how many characters there were on entry. Not super useful. Not something you really need to do, but a lot of fun. And it was a great way to, as I said in the comments, kick the tires and say, OK, cool. I kind of get what they're doing here, and I kind of enjoy using it. So to take a look at the output, you know, I entered my name, which um, I noticed this conference has completely deleted my last name. So that's what it is if you were looking at the conference schedule. I have a last name. You don't have to say it, though. Um, and it kicks it back and it says, this is 10 characters long, including a space. Awesome, really simple. It's a little applet. It's simple, it's to the point, it gets the job done. Um, there's lots of examples, different you know, string manipulation, arithmetic, things like that that are all in the examples Rosetta code folder. And if you want to get into Mira, I highly recommend checking it out. But what else do people do with Mira? Because this is, uh, no one's getting $100,000 a year to count people's names. Um, one of the big things that's, that's actually come out of it is a lot of people are using it for Android development. Um, there's a lot of open projects using Mira for Android development, which is really cool. A lot, there's a lot of people building plugins, which is also awesome, and we're getting towards more tools and frameworks. The potential uses for Mira are limited only by what the language currently holds. So the more we contribute, the more possibilities can grow. And it's really, it, like in my mind, it's really cool because um, up until a couple years ago, if you wanted to do Android development and you were a Ruby developer, you were basically screwed. Um, then Ruby Motion finally came out with something. It was kind of cantankerous and clunky. And it was cool, but you also had to pay for it. Now you don't have to pay for it. Here's an open source language. You can build Android apps natively using a very familiar language that's very lightweight. Um, so some frameworks and tools that have come up. 
Dubious is currently the big major player as far as web frameworks for Mira. Um, it runs on the Google App Engine, provides a way to build apps in Mira the way that Rails and Sinatra do for Ruby devs. Um, I should say like vanilla Ruby devs, I guess that makes more sense. Um, and since Mira is compiled, there's no like initializations costs like you might see with JRuby. Um, Dubious has an ERB. It has a simple adapter for data that uses a da da data mapper like syntax. It's not exactly the same, but it's similar. Um, and it's important to note that like Mira, Dubious is in the very early stages, so it's growing. Um, it's like if you were using like Rails 1 or Rails 2 back in the day and you're like, great, this kind of works, good enough, I have a job, yay. Um, there's also Pinda, which is really cool. It's a tool set specifically for building Android apps, so that's really cool. It does require the Android SDK, um, and all of the examples that they have are using RBM. If you prefer that for your version manager, then you're ready to go. If you don't, then that's cool too. Um, Mira MBN is a cool NetBeans module for Mira, so if you're looking for a specific IDE to develop Mira in, that's awesome. Um, if you don't care about your IDE, that's awesome too. So what's next? The most important thing about Mira is that it's an open source project. It's still a baby. Um, it's a great chance for you to get in on the ground floor. If you always feel like, you know, oh, I really missed the train on JRuby, or I can't even get involved in this open source project because it's been going for too long, and you feel kind of left out, here's your chance, 0.0.14. .0 you are ground floor. Start coding. Um, a, a lot of the questions, and I know Terrence knows this, when, when you say you should get involved in open source, people are always like, great, what, what can I do? Write documentation, write tests, try to build a language. Just any little thing you can do to help out, talk about it. That's what I'm doing. I mean, I submitted a code example. It was little tiny, and when they accepted my pull request, I was like, you know, every time a pull request gets accepted, I do like a little happy dance. Pull request accepted. But anything that you do to get people more interested and get them involved makes the language better. So, again, there's a lot of potential here to bring the awesome worlds of Java and Ruby together to make that peanut butter club, allergies unacceptable, um, to a place where you can give more people more peanut butter cups. Um, it's simple to use. The compiled aspects helps to eliminate a lot of gotchas that we get in Ruby. Um, and while there's still a lot of road that we have to travel before we get to 1.0, it's kind of, you know, there are people who are using it for production things, especially with Android apps. So I went a little bit over my time. If you have questions for me, feel free. My name is PJ. Ask me for pins. Thank you.